Can we take some time to pray in the Holy Ghost? Barabina to shika pala balata. E kapara to santa prehido si kabar. E perra kapena kosa kapala tia kapanda. Zia koko parus kapababanda. E rata bata kete kota vira kato su kapaliata. Embrus kapananta liko brohoskiba. La siziate. Embrus kap. Oh, I receive grace to come, to come, to come. Maku katula su kapina. Rabi kana bros kapababanta. Ia baba rada bada kepa liko to shaka pila katia. Repite kapala kwa kata. I put away every distraction. In la virahante su kapia. Rabi da kapila kote berwa kapa. I set away. I, I put aside every load that is Give me down. I come, I come. Enough of being deceived. Thinking that I can be transformed without coming. Lord, I come tonight. Maybe it is even bitterness in your heart that is preventing you from coming. I come come tonight my heart is poised i come i come i come makuta bira has katalia embre to sakapinata i come i come irada baneto sakapilada embre te kutapila rabina kusakapilada ba embra skapalante irede berede beneto akapa yede de berede de beletwata embra embra yabwa bwa bwa te berwata eletu skapila Mebiante kuma erwa kapananta zaba babiata rebebe de beraba bode beruba bananta embros kabilanta rabia pianta le kwa kwa teke beleta rekebenete berekete beleta iko tapina mambros kapina erwa daba banta re kwa kwa tapina roko doko doko roko doko lata ire kwa kwa teke beleta I come tonight me me ne kuparada oh my God. God, I call Kai. I come, I come, I come. Yakwa kwata pina. Is it? Is it? Well, well. It's, it's not like I don't love God, though. But I, I, I used to lie. I'm still lying. So let me still stop this line. When I stop lying, then I will come. I, I, I will follow God. Hello, sir. That without your lie, come, come, come. Are you there? Well. I, I don't, this my life, I don't even know the way my life is. Me and this masturbation thing that when I'm, when I overcome the masturbation, I will follow God. Now, God is not, God, Jesus is saying, without your masturbation, come, come, come. It is when you come that you'll be transformed. Are you there? Maybe a sister is saying, ah, my own, well, my own is lost to this, me that I'm battling with lust. Can God even work with people like me? Well, any day I'm free from this thing. Come as you are. There's no dress code. Eh? Jesus is not asking you to know. There's no dress code. Come. Just come as you are. Come. Come to the feast. The food is free. Come and eat bread without, without pain. Come and drink wine without paying anything. Come and eat meat that is free. Meat that is meat indeed. Come as you are. That's it. There's no dress code. Just come. Come so that you can become. Don't change before you come. Come, let him change you. Come. Are you there? Don't wait to be a saint. There's, the empowerment to be a saint is not outside Christ. It's in him. So, I, well, I'm, I'm so dirty. Look at my hands. My hands are soiled with sin. I'm just... Without your dirtiness, come. There's something about him. The one that is calling you to come will cleanse you. It is when you come that you'll be cleansed. It is when you come that you'll be sanctified. It is when you come that you'll become. It is when you come that you can represent him. Outside of him, there's no transformation. Come. 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 The, 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 the call tonight is a simple call. Say, come. 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 I know you are speaking in tongues and then there's still one habit that is giving you headache. You have prayed about it. It's just still there. And you are, you are looking at yourself as, as an unserious Christian. Maybe if you can just come tonight, just come and that's all. Shabababia, 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 Yabababia, Kaito Piat, 
Kapiante, Kapianto Koba, Aquacatia Makia, Kapapa, Yakapapampe, Yakwante, I Apapabia, Yakwantabia. My face will no longer be veiled. I come tonight, I come. I break away from the chain. I come, I come, I come. Ababiata, Abia, Shkapababia, Ambro Kapianto, Sapina, Atuaka, Aruate, Ikatia, Arababia, and Waka Pompe. I come tonight. I Shapababia, Iraka Pampabia, Aquanta Kababia, Atuanta, Kaba, Etwata, Aquaka Pampabia, Aquaka Pababia, Tento, Aquata. I come tonight. Oh my God. I Shapa, Shapa Babia, Antosha, Marwanta, Te, 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 Aquaka Babia, Atwaka. I come tonight. I come with my weakness. I come, I come. Without my sinful addiction, I come. I come into transformation. In the name of Jesus. Aradai. Tekopakatia, Shaka Pakapa, Lekoparwakate, Shkapam Pakatia, Yaketeka Perekatikaba, Yaketeka Perekatia Kaba, Yakuata Panto Skapia, Yakata Baruakata, Yaketeka Teka. I come, oh my God, Makwapa, Skapia, Tetua Kapia, Tetua, Tetua Kapapa Papiate, Yakuakatam Pakuakate, Yakuakata Katia, Maparuata, Skapa, Yatatam Pakuate, Lekwa. Quateca, a super, mapiate, la quanta quacatile, a rua rua ruato, mepe recatebo, yacaparataba, yacaparataba, irrecatepecato. Maybe your own is unforgiveness. Somebody did something to you, and your heart is offended, your heart is bitter against the person. Come tonight with that unforgiveness. Come, 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 come. If you come, something will happen to your heart. You cannot continue to carry the load come sister come 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 sister come 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 something will happen to you come come brother come come just come come ah, yeah. I come. I come as I am. I come. I come. without my no. I'm I, I'm coming. Lord. I'm coming tonight. The, 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 oh my God. Oh my God. My neck can no longer carry the load. It's too heavy for me. I. Come, I come tonight. Mamba neku baruata, mento saki la barua. I honor that invitation for that great feast by Jesus. I come tonight. Oh, kaminata, mambro si kabila, mete beruka bal. I'm not waiting to be strong outside Jesus. I'm honoring that invitation. I'm coming with my weakness. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Yabila kubarada bal. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. With my with that my weakness, I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah, Baba Raba Bada Beletta. Mamba Tiakoba. Yeah, but the bedroom. I'm coming. Maybe you are addicted to something. And then you say, I'm smoking. How can I even come to Jesus? Me that I'm smoking. You see, without your cigarette, eh? With that cigarette, come, come, come. Come, come with it, come. It will change you. Come, come, come. Just come, just come. The lepers met him and they were transformed. The blind met him. When the blind came, they saw. When the sick came to him, they were healed. Even when the dead was brought to him, even the dead came and the dead came alive. <laughs> yeah, Katia, I come. It therefore means there's no state you find yourself tonight that God, Jesus, cannot receive you. If any man come, 
come to me. I will by no means cast away. Yabaru Kamananto, Rebida Barada. The meal is ready. The drink is ready. The meat is ready. You don't have to pay for it. You, there's no dress code for it. The instruction is come. Yakabarataba. I come, I come, I come tonight. Mabaliako Shabinai. I'm, I'm looking for a way to explain this thing. I'm looking for a way. Okay, now let's look at it from another light. Let's look at this from another light. God as people, God as angel, God as archangel. Are you there? Now, one thing God does is this the more your position with God, the more the level of authority that you can you can exercise are you there when the devil rebelled against god are you there and he left and he was cast down the power that god gave him because of that position that he maintained in heaven was not taken away from him so that was why with that power he could now transform himself into the angels of light to deceive men and he's still doing it even till now. Are you with me? So human beings have people that if they pull out, people that they, 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 they have to deal with with, uh, with all diligence. Are you there? Human beings have people that they have to please, but God does not have. So that's why the, the, the actions of a man can affect his fellow man but the actions of both man and angel cannot affect God. Are you there? Let's take note of that. Um, Esther chapter 1 from verse 1. Um, before I begin to read from verse 1, um, I want you to understand something. If you uh, read about the book of, Sam, um, the book of Esther, one of the things you will see is that um, they are going to come up with the fact that, okay, the book of Esther is the only book in the Bible where the name God is not mentioned. Now, as I'm saying it now, some of you, you, you have heard something like that before. That's the only book in the Bible where God is not mentioned. Now, the question is, for the fact that God is not mentioned, does it mean God is not there? Are you there? In the book of Esther, you may not see G-O-D, but actually in every verse of that book, God is there. That's it. In every verse of that book, in every of those verses, God is there. God is there. Are you there? So, I want you to prepare your mind, prepare your heart to see God. Prepare your heart to receive from the Lord because God is hidden in between those letters, in between those verses. But if your heart is connected, I can assure you there is a word for you from the Lord tonight. So, Esther chapter 1 from verse 1. Now it came to pass in the day of Ahasuerus. This is Ahasuerus who reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over 107 and 20 provinces. Now, Ahasuerus is a very mighty king. At that time, the Bible made us to understand that he was reigning over 127 provinces. Provinces then is like you are saying states or maybe probably countries. So imagine a king ruling over 127 different states. That's to show you how mighty the king was. So King Ahasuerus is a very great king, a great king indeed. Are you there? In those days, one of the one of the criteria for ruling over large cities is your your military strength. So it will mean that King Ahasuerus has a strong military strength because in those days, any city you conquer becomes subject to you. So it will mean that. Several times, King Ahasuerus has gone to fight and then he has been winning. So, and those territories he won became subject to him. So, these were part of the 
provinces that were counted you know that were counted to be under his rulership are you there so the one that conquers are you there is above the one that is conquered so whosoever is defeated becomes subject to the one that defeated him are you there are you get what i'm saying so um the lord is opening my eyes to see something from that verse one remember i was telling you i said king ahasuerus ruled over 127 provinces and i told you how kings had you know how they come across how they come about that they fight and whatever territory they win becomes subject to them so that territory be, will be counted as a part of the uh, cities where they rule so either because by victory that territory is now subject to them so they will now rule that territory now the funniest part is the king of that territory may still be there as a king but that king will now move from being uh, the 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 absolute power to to becoming the minor power such that though the territory will have a king but that king that has defeated the territory will now control the things that will be happening in that territory so if the king of the territory says something and the one that conquered the territory says no the king will have to flow with that instruction are you there so as i was saying that the lord opened my eyes to say something this can also be likened to what happens when the, a man is conquered by sin are you there when sin conquers you you become subject to that sin so that sin begins to determine how you live your life there are people that have been conquered by smoking so even when they want to stop smoking they cannot stop they cannot stop smoking because that thing has conquered them anything any sinful habit you find hard to stop is and is a habit that has conquered you are you there uh -huh. so the day you will stop is the day you are empowered to conquer that thing but as long as you remain subject you will continue in that act. So, uh, sinful addiction is a sign that you are already defeated. Are you there? Because in that defeated state, your will will no longer count. You will now begin to function according to the desire of the one that has defeated you. Are you with me? Now, the Bible now told us that this king made a feast for the powers. Now, why is he now is making the feast for the powers so that he can retain his own power? As long as the powers are not rebelling against him, he will maintain his own power. Now, this is one of the wisdom of leadership, ability to uh, to please the powers, either ability to to. Be united with the powers because if any of those powers decided to go against you you will feel it that's why we must ensure that we do not bring just anyhow people into sensitive position because once they become a power they can make you lose your power uh, Lucifer that was the deception that Lucifer had in his mind. Now, because he had become a, a, an archangel, he thought he is now the power. So he felt if he rebelled against God, the, the, the government of God will crumble. But unfortunately, there is a part of the script that was hidden from him. You see, in the in the head realm, men had people that he can refer to either they have people in their government that have powers such men that if they pull out the, the leadership will be affected but god does not have people like that if all the angels in heaven decides to rebel the government of god will not shake because god is power and all the power is him you get what I'm saying? So there is nobody that will rebel now that will affect God. That's why the rebellion 
of Lucifer could not shake God. Are you there? Are, are you seeing what I'm saying now? And then another way to look at this is, you see, Lucifer, the archangel, when he rebelled against God, that was the first time we heard that war broke out in heaven. Are you with me? So God can give a sensitive position to a person. Are you there? But yet, that he has given you that position does not mean you have now become a power. Are you getting what I'm saying? So let's move to verse 2. The Bible says that in those days, when King Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the palace. So uh, the palace of King Ahasuerus was in a place called Shushan. Let's take note of that. Now, if you go to verse 3, the Bible now says, In the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants. The power of Pasha and Media, the nobles and the princes of the provinces, being before him. The word being before him means being made subject to him. Being before him means those who were accountable to him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, what happened is this. After Hasaros had ruled for three years, so he now made a feast and he decided to call all his, you know, all the rulers, the governors of the provinces, just to celebrate, you know, just for them to have this get together and just rejoice and eat and drink. That was after three years of his rulership. Now, what actually is he celebrating? Because the Bible did not really show us what he was celebrating. But we know that now the king has decided to throw a party. So if you come into that story by the Spirit of God, you now discover that there's actually something that the man is celebrating. And the major thing he's celebrating is his greatness. Are you there? He's celebrating... Uh, his skill, the, the, the leadership skill that he has, the fact that he was able to rule 127 provinces and then none of them broke out. Are you there? He was, he was able to rule them for that three years and then there was no case of any of the provinces, any of the kings there rebelling against him. So he decided to throw a party to celebrate that unity. So this celebration was a celebration of unity, right there. a celebration of a leadership that is active, a leadership that is not fa- that is not faulty. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's also a celebration of his military strength, his ability to to fight and win. So there are so many things the king is actually celebrating which were not captured in this place. Are you there? Oh my God! I don't know why God is bringing me back to this. All right, let's 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 view this again. Let's view this again. The the first time the Bible recorded that there was a war in heaven was when Lucifer rebelled. So the rebellion of Lucifer created a reality in heaven that has never existed before. So for the first time in history, we now got to know that there was a war in heaven. So the question is. How was Lucifer able to um, create a war? How how was he able to make that history in heaven? Something that has never happened before, how was he able to create it? Power. So, uh, power has the ability to create. So, when God brought him into the position of an archangel, a particular, uh, there's, there's a dimension of power that was given to him. So it is this power that he used to create that reality. So if you have power, you can create a reality. Are you there? So a powerful man is not the one that is confessing, I'm a powerful man, I have the power of God. Mm -mm. The one that has power will not necessarily confess it to you. There's something he can create. Are you there? As, enab- as enabled by that power that he has, that will show you this one has power. So Lucifer was not shouting, I have power. Mm-mm. 
there was something he did in heaven as a matter of fact he made a history in heaven something that has never happened before because of him war broke out in heaven are you there and that was the first and the last time because there was after that there was no longer war again he, he, he was so influential that when he was cast down the bible now told us that even the angels rejoiced that he has been sent down so one thing to note is this if you have power then you have the ability to create power is creative genesis 1 3 and god said let there be light and there was light he said it and something was created that is power somebody is listening to me now now this is the word of the lord to you if you say it it will be created maybe you are sick something is wrong with something in your body you can feel the pain and you are just managing it you are you are waiting for god to come down to come and heal you now this is the word of the lord to you the lord is saying speak to it create that thing you want to see and then you will see it you will see the reality the power is not anywhere else is in you already speak it say it out say what you want to see and you will have the reality that's the word of the lord to someone i don't know who the lord is speaking to but somebody needs to get this now still in that verse 3 he made a feast for the powers of media and Persia. <laughs> so that means people can be power now let me ask you a question um the word of god is who is jesus now this thing i want to say now is not milk is meat you have to be spiritually active to receive don't just hear you have to receive i want to share a mystery with you now by the spirit of god so i pray you come into the understanding in the name of jesus now look at this jesus is the word of god you believe that okay <laughs> okay if you believe jesus is the word of god that means anytime god speaks jesus appears anytime god speaks jesus is revealed am i right now and the bible told us and god and then you know by the inspiration of the spirit of god we were made to understand that the bible is the word of god so if the bible is the word of god that means the bible is actually jesus because jesus is the word are you with me okay now the love of god is not something the love of god is a person and the name of that person is jesus so when jesus came the the appearance of jesus is actually the appearance of the love of god are you with me so when jesus came the love of god came so what died on the cross was actually the love of God. It was the love of God that paid the price for our sins. I've not gotten, I'm just trying to lay a foundation because if I go straight into the, that mystery, you may not understand. But I'm trying to create this foundation so that if I go straight into it, now you can now come into understanding. Are you there? So Jesus had 12 disciples, meaning that the love of God that came also raised disciples. So it takes love to do ministry. Jesus healed the sick. That means the love of God healed the sick. So that means the part of God that is healing the sick is his love. Jesus preached the gospel. That means the love of God preaches the gospel. So if you really love God, you will preach the gospel. Are you there? <laughs> okay. Jesus honored, you know, the word of the Lord. Jesus, Jesus honored the, the, the scriptures are you there jesus overcame the devil that means the love of god is what you need to overcome the devil are you with me now i think i can go to it now but there is something in that verse 3 that i want you to pay attention to now the bible says he made a feast unto his princes and his servants so it was not only leaders that were called into 
Are you there? Into the feast. Now, this, this feast that the king made had categories. There's an aspect for the, the VIPs, and there is another one for the general people. So the, the, there's a space in the party where the servant can come to. But there's, of course, there's a demarcation. Either just like what we have in some of these events now. They tell you this place is for VIP. They tell you this one is for VVIP. Then they tell you this one is for the normal people. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is exactly what is happening here. Are you there? The feast is for the leaders and also the servants. But there is a place I want you to pay attention to. There is something I want us to note here. The Bible now says, He made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Pasha and Media. Now the question is, uh, from here now we now see that the Bible is saying that this feast that the king made is for the powers of Pasha and Media. So who are the powers? That's the question. Now is it the powers that the king made the feast to? Is not spirit as it is. The powers as used there is referring to people. People who are holding sensitive position. People who, if they decide to rebel, the kingdom will break. Those are the powers. If you are in a ministry or you are in an organization and you are holding a very delicate post, you are on the strength of this now, either in this context, you are among the powers. So power is not just something that comes upon you. Mm-mm. Power is also a person. A power can also be a person who is holding a very prestigious position, a very sensitive position. For example, the power of a nation is the president of the nation. After the president, there are other powers. The House of Senate, the ministers, are you getting what I'm saying? Those whose decision can influence the, the direction of a territory are the powers of that territory. Are you with me? So, dear Lord, we are grateful for the opportunity. It's always a privilege to come to your presence, especially to have access to your eternal wisdom. So, Lord, again tonight, as you have been speaking to us, we we ask that you help us to receive. We are sure that you will speak. But our prayer tonight is that you help us to position our hearts rightly to receive from you and not to be forgetful here. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. So, now, pay attention. What? I'm, I'm, what I said is just to lay a foundation. I need to say those things about Jesus so that I can bring you into understanding. So now we believe that Jesus is the word of God. Everything that Jesus did is actually the word of the Lord that is doing it. Are you there? And not only that, Jesus is the love of God. So if we say that a sinner, if you go to a sinner and you say, give your life to Jesus, what are you saying? You are saying, give your life to the love of God. You are saying, live the life of love. That's what you are saying. Surrender to Jesus means surrender to the love of God. So that you can now begin to express God's kind of love, the pure form of love. Are you there? So now we have been able to establish and agree that Jesus is the word of God and Jesus is the love of God. As a matter of fact, Jesus is everything that God has to give to humanity. Hmm? Jesus is the peace of God and everything. Are you with me? Now, back to Esther chapter 1 verse 3. The Bible now told us that the king made a feast for the powers of Media and Persia. And I told you that this power is the people, not forces, now, not principalities. I mean humans. If you are a president, your powers are the ministers that are working with you. Those are your powers. Because those people are holding, anyone that is holding a delicate position in your cabinet, 
whose decision, whose rebellion can shake your government is a power. Are you get what I'm saying? Now, if those people in the book of Esther chapter 1 verse 3 are referred to as the powers of Media and Persia, the question is, what or who is the power of God? When Jesus came, Jesus was the power of God, physically expressed. Now Jesus has ascended. The question is, who is the power of God? Because the power of God, unfortunately now, even the powers of God are still asking for the powers of God. That's the irony of this thing. If Jesus came, and Jesus is representing the power of God, now Jesus has ascended. We, are you there? We have received Christ. We are the sons of God by adoption. So now that Jesus has ascended, who is now the power of God? It therefore means that everyone that is submitted to the government of the Holy Spirit, everyone that is, that is led by the Spirit of God is the power of God. Can you see what I'm saying now? Somebody is trying to fight it. Is this thing true? That's why I have to lay that foundation. So if the power of God is now asking for the power of God, can you now see that there's, there's confusion? And the Bible told us that God is not the author of confusion. Now, why are you, why have you now become the power of God? Now, you have become the power of God because if God will now do anything to your neighbor, he will do it through you. So you can pray for your neighbor and your neighbor is healed. You can preach to that sinner and he or she is coming to Christ because God is now what expressing himself through you. So the power of God is a vessel through which God can express himself. So if you yield to God, to the degree where God can use you for others, to the degree where God can accomplish his will through your life, you have become the power of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh Now, Esther chapter 1 from verse 3. In the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all the princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and the princes of the provinces being before him. So that statement being before him means that those people that were mentioned were under him, though they were rulers. They were leaders, but they were still under him. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's what the Bible is trying to say when it says being before him, meaning all the powers, the the princes, the rulers of the provinces, they are still under this king. That's to show you how great he is. Now, the Lord has taught me so many things by grace, and I'm still learning. But I'm going to share something with you. There's something the Lord taught me one time. The Lord said, son, the the sign that a man is great is not that he is raising uh, uh, ignorant people. No. If a man is great, he must be able to raise great people. So this king is a great king because under him are leaders. I mean, leaders of leaders are you there so if a man is a great man the proof that he is a great man is not just in the numbers of men that he has no are you there don't look at numbers look at the quality of the life of those who are submitted to him you can't say you are a leader when everyone you are leading are just normal men ordinary men worthless men, mediocre. No. Your greatness is in the quality of investment that is in those people that you are raising. So if you are a leader, you must raise leaders. Don't raise... Are you getting what I'm saying? So the quali- check the quality, not just the numbers. Um, if you followed the first series of this teaching, I'm going to advise you, for those of you that you are new on the group and then you were unable to listen to to the first series of this teaching, please, you can reach out to um, Minister Glory Rem uh, concerning that. He is going to send 
the teachings to you you need to get the first series of this teaching so that you can understand where we are coming from because there's so much to learn so i may not be able to go back to the first series so if you need the first series the audios you can reach out to to him and then you will get them i can assure you you will get them so maybe after the teaching you can just request for the part one of the the book of esther and then they will reach out to you if you want to be qualified for wealth and riches fear god it is that fear of god that will become your empowerment to rule over things not things ruling over you are you with me that's it that's it some people are so they are so addicted to vanity that even things that does not belong to them they still want to show with it they want to show that are you there like i used you know i, I remember i was teaching one time ago and i was saying it in it was it was a relationship teaching i was saying it and then you know especially sisters they were laughing ah you know papa is funny but that's the truth you can't find me snapping anyhow around no i can't <laughs> You can't, you can't find me snapping, you know, I will just go and stand beside one car that is not my own. Then I will, I will stretch my leg like I'm the owner of the car and then shine my teeth. And then begin to take picture. For what reason? No, I don't need it. Are you there? I don't need it. You don't need to show anything. Are you there? Many people are so carried away by vanity that even what they don't have, they still want to show the world that they have it. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. Let's be wise. Wisdom is profitable for direction. Are you there? Learn to keep your mouth short. Many people live a short life because their mouth is not short. Are you there? If your mouth is not short, the opposite happens to your life. A mouth that cannot be kept quiet, a mouth, if you don't know how to keep things, you don't know how to, you know, you don't know how to uh, manage things, how to hide, you may not stay for long. You may not, and if you will live long, you may not have impact. There are some of you listening to me now, if you are traveling, we will know from your status, because you will type it there, on my way to, 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 to Kaduna. And when you get down, we also know from your status. I'm just arrived. It's not necessary. It's not that. You know, Ecclesiastes says, vanity upon vanity, all is what? All is vanity. It's not what? Necessary. This is I'm taking time. To, it's all these things I'm saying look simple. But this is the foundation of vanity. Because people like you now, if God now bless you, you will become a slave to that money. Because you will want to show and it will not be about giving glory to God. It will be about glorifying yourself, glorifying your ego. Are you getting it? Okay. I, okay, okay, okay. You know what? We'll, we'll continue that teaching next week because the Lord is not allowing me to, to continue with that teaching. So the Lord wants me to stay on this thing. Somebody must get it. Somebody must get it tonight. Some of you, you stay in your sitting room and you are taking selfie there. Right there. The reason you are doing that is because you want the world to see that uh, you are using flat screen TV. And you want them to see that you have POP on your roof. Those things you are doing is an advertisement of ignorance. You think you are in freedom, but you are actually in bandage. It's not necessary. It's not. It's not necessary. Hmm? If you see a good example, follow. If you see a wrong one, don't follow. Don't just follow anybody who is moving. Don't just follow anybody who is leading. Be careful to check what kind of leader they are. Be careful to check in what direction are they moving. Are you getting what I'm saying? So most of us, we everything we do is just to show. We want to show. They must know. They must know what. They must know what. Huh? They mu- what must they know? It's about people. It's no longer about God now. Meanwhile, some of these people who are telling you that they just bought a 
May God help us. They will tell you how that uh, somebody bought a chair for one million naira. Meanwhile, this same person, every morning when he's driving, he sees poor people who cannot afford to eat three square meals. He looks away from them. Then the money that he can use to feed those people for one year, he will now use the money to buy shoe. The shoe that he will wear maybe two or three times. Why? Because is that thing he's doing is a sign that he's in bondage. Now let me now tell you the truth. If you want to find people that truly have money, eh, what you will find in them is the fear of God. So you can't have money except you are a child of God. Only children of God is empowered over money. So anybody who is wealthy and it does not have the fear of God is a slave to that wealth. That's what God is trying to say. Only a child of God can have money. Mm? Mm -hmm. So that's why the Bible says you should not desire the wealth of the wicked. The reason the Bible says you should not desire the wealth of the wicked is because those things you see them gather, they don't have it. They are slaves to those things. Huh? And some of you listening to me now, you have uncles who are slaves to money. It is anything that money asks them to do that they will do. The first sign, and which is actually the major sign, to look out for in the life of a man that has become slave to money is love. It's love for money. They can do anything to get money. That one, hmm? that, that, that uncle that you know that can do anything to get money. Eh? That man that you know that is always showing you his new shoe, his new, eh? that used to post everything on the status. The day he bought a car, he posted it. The day he was eating a, a full chicken, he posted it. Hmm? That, that man is in bandage. He's in bandage. Have you not studied the life of Jesus? That's a man that is truly in charge. Jesus will heal somebody and he will say, please don't tell anybody. I, I thought we, we, oh my God, you see now, you see, you see. I'm already, you see, I'm already burdened now. Now, this burden is now changing my message. I've left the normal teaching. I'm now attending to the burden of my heart. Please forgive me. <laughs> have we, have we, have we gotten another model apart from Jesus? If it is Jesus we are following, can't we read the way he lived his life in the scriptures? Jesus will heal people. And he will tell those people, please don't tell anybody. That's a man that is in charge. Are you there? But unfortunately in this generation now, God will, it's God that is doing it too. God will heal somebody through a minister. The minister will now go to we now begin to announce it, post it on status, post it on this. Yes, so so people were here. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. The, those that are in charge, one of the signs to see is they are very quiet. They don't show themselves. When you are truly in charge, eh? when you find, you see, let me give you one sign. When you find men who, who truly have authority, you will see meekness in them. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to be meek when you have power. But truly, if you come into authority, meekness will be your nature. Study the life of Moses. You see what I'm talking about. Certain people gathered against him. Are you the one that will be leading us? You can hear God. We can hear God. God came down and Moses was still affected because of meekness. If you don't have meekness, it's a sign that you don't have authority. God cannot even trust you with authority until he works meekness into you. God cannot trust you with authority until he works meekness into you. God cannot trust you with authority until he works meekness into you. So until maybe you just bought a shoe or you are planning to buy something and your plan is when you buy it, you will show it to. You don't need to do that. Huh? You don't need to what? To do, you don't need to advertise bondage. Begin to act like someone that is in charge. Huh? You don't need to show off. Let the glory go to God, not to people. So, for the first time, we, are, we, we now see a king who is so wealthy that um, 
He organized a party that lasted for six months. 180 days. You can't imagine the kind of wealth <laughs> this king had. Let's continue. Verse 5. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan. Now look at verse 5 is now telling us that after the whole 180 days has ended, that means after the um, six month party, imagine somebody killing cows, not one now, cows, every day for six months. Just, just, just try to imagine the amount of billions that person will have spent. Now, after you now finished this party that lasted for 180 days, let's look at let's look at what now happened. Verse 5. And when these days were expired, that means when the 180 days ended, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan, the place, the, the palace, both unto great and small, seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace. So after he finished that 180 days, that one is for, the, the party that lasted for 180 days, that one is for the, the VIPs, the, the governors, the rulers of province, provinces, either leaders, powers of Persia, princes, that one is for those people. After he finished that, he now organized another feast for seven days. Now, this one is for both great and small. It means that the criteria to come into this one, this other one now, that lasted for seven days, is not as high as that one. So the other one, you know, you know he felt, you know, because he's a king, he should also allow the poor people to come in. So he now organized another one, seven days. That one is, is open to all, both great and small. Meaning even servants can enter. They will still eat and be fed. Are you getting what I'm saying? What do you see from that? That is some level of administration. Are you there? The king is trying to carry both the both the, the, the rich and the poor. He's trying to carry them along by making provision for them. Though the provision that was made for these two categories of people are not the same. But yet, we could see that he still made provisions for them. I pray for somebody listening to me. You will not be poor in the name of Jesus. You see, when you have money, Naturally, you enjoy some honor. You, you enjoy some level of honor. Wealth can command honor. Are you with me? Naturally. When you see somebody that is wealthy, you just... If you don't honor the person for his personality, you honor him for that wealth that he has gathered. Are you getting what I'm saying? You know... <laughs> when you begin to see people give certain qualities, when you begin to see... You know, when you read the Bible and you see that the king is saying the, the, the lady must be a virgin, she must be this, she must be that, you begin to wonder who is this person you want to marry and you are listing all these qualities. It's not just about those things. It's about the, the person that wants to marry. It is the greatness of the king that wants to marry that is provoking those criteria. Are you there? If you want to marry a useless person, you don't need to, you don't need to do so much it's very easy because the one that has no value has no standard that's why there are some ladies now you can just give them uh, one thousand naira, and then you you will have your way <laughs> you have your way in their life why they don't have value so they lack standard your standard is in your value you see when you have standards so when you begin to build value eh? your standard begins to increase. I'm not saying now you become arrogant. That's not what I'm talking about. This standard I'm referring to does not take away the place of submission and humility. Are you there? By the grace of God, I have a lot of daughters. I have, okay, not a lot. I have few daughters. I have some daughters. Are you there? Not too many. At least not up to 100. But I know I have more than 10. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, these, these wonderful sisters... If you see them, you know that this, this set of people, they have value. They have standards. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your standard is in your value. 
The reason I'm taking my time to talk on this is because I want you to understand why the criteria for selecting a wife for this king was that strenuous, was that tedious. It was because of the greatness of the one that I want to marry. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you become great, it will affect everything around you. Even your choice of friends will be affected by your level of greatness. Now, Esther chapter 1 verse 4. Let's start from there. When he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even an hundred and four score days. Now, this an hundred and four score days is an expression of old English. This English is old. English had already, you know, grown more than this. That's why I said, if you want to understand old English, go and study old King James. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, in old English, 80, you know, in those days when English was, evol- it was in, you know, evolving, there was nothing like um, uh, 20, no, no, no. If you want to say 20, then you say score. If you want to say 40, you say two score. If you want to say uh, 60, you say, you say, you say, you say three score. So when you see score in the Bible, they are referring to 20. So when this place is now, now look at this. This place is now saying 104 score. So that is 100 plus 4 score. That is 4 times 20. So 80 plus 100, 180. So that means this celebration was going on for, (laughs) you can't imagine. This celebration lasted for six months. That's 180 days. Imagine a king. The king just wanted to celebrate his wealth. He now used six months to celebrate how wealthy he is. That's to show you how great the king was. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why the, the, the salvation that cannot affect the way you live your life it's not it's not genuine it's not genuine you now you claim you are saved but the numbers the friends you are keeping before you come to salvation are still the same friends you are keeping now that you now claim you are saved hello something is wrong somewhere somebody is lying somebody is lying because the salvation that has not had any impact on you the salvation that cannot affect your taste your choice that cannot affect your life is questionable. Are you there? So this king was so great that his greatness now began to affect the criteria for the kind of wife that he will marry. If you notice what I'm saying now, it looks like I've jumped. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about something in the future. Are you there? That's how God wants it. I don't want to be too formal because if I want to be formal, I will not be saying what I'm saying because this thing I'm saying now is not in this verse. Are you there? It's not here. It's not, are you there? It's still downwards. But I just have to say it because somebody needs to hear it. And because that's what God wants me to say. Sometimes when you are teaching, God wants you to jump ahead of yourself. He's the one teaching. So it's not about you, it's about him. Are you there? Everything you have become will affect the way you live your life. Some of you will discover that your, your passion, your, your love for food suddenly dropped when you start becoming serious with God. Something about you will change. Are you there? It will just change. Are you there? Everything you, as you begin to grow in God, that your growth is greatness. Eh? And that your greatness will affect your choices. It will affect the way you see people. Some of you now, you can relate with what I'm saying. Now, after some time, after some time, you know now they have written the Bible. Now, after some time, English now began to evolve. That's why English is one of the earliest languages. Because English is, I think, I don't think English is up. I don't think English is up to 800 years old. But languages like Hebrew, thousands of years they have been existing. 
languages like Greek, thousands of years, but English language is not, I don't think English language is up to 800 years old. It has, I don't think it's up to, it has, I don't think it has existed for up to, up to 800 years. I get what I'm saying. And the reason English language has not gone into extinction was because English language is not static, it's changing. Remember I told you, I said, let's do little theology. So that's what I'm doing now. English language is static, it's not changing. So a language that will stay for long must be flexible. And that's why you say that English is still in vogue. Why? Because of the changing nature that it has. That's why you will discover that the, the, the way King James wrote the scripture is somehow complicated. Because at that time when English evolved, it was not as beautiful as it is now. So in those days, if you want to say you are, you will see thou art. Because in those days, while English was involving, you is thou. Ah is at. And many other things you see in King James. If you want to understand Old English, go and, go and get Old King James Version. You will understand how Old English looked like. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, there's something I want to explain that made me go into this little theology. All right, let me go back to the teaching. Now, let's continue in verse 6. Where were white grain and blue hangings? What they are trying to say here is in that decoration, you see white curtains, you see green curtains, and you see blue curtains. What they mean by hangings in, in that time, hangings is the same as curtains. Are you there? So you see white curtains, you see green curtains, you see blue curtains. Fasting with cords of fine lining and purple to silver rings and pillars of marble. Those were designs. Designs that were used to decorate the place where the feast was going on. The beds were of gold and silver. Can you see that? Somebody had beds. And the bed he's sleeping on is made of gold and silver. That is to tell you how, how worthy he was. Upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble. Look at, you know. So the, the king in his greatness enjoyed some level of, you know, a high level of classic things. Look at those colors. They were able to arrange colors. So all these things we'll see today. You know, sometimes when you pick your phone and you are seeing some mega churches, you see the color, the uniform of their workers, the way everything they are uh, their altar you jo- you want to go to that church not because there is word there not because you necessarily be blessed but the the beautification of that auditorium is is enticing so you want to go there that thing that you are seeing did not start from now it started from the bible days are you there that was an example of what happened to this king if you enter into that palace wh- while the feast was going on you will see a lot of wonderful colors And it did not even start from this king. If you study the life of Solomon, you will also understand, you know, how that Solomon understood colors. You come into his palace, you see a lot of beautiful things there. But is that enough? No, it's not enough. There is something more than just colors. There is something more than just beautification. The, the colors and the beautification will appeal to the eyes. It will, it will attract the eyes. Are you there? But what actually builds the spirit is the word of God. Is the word of God. Some of you are going to church now. The church you are going to, the major reason you are going there is because the church is fine. You have all the instruments. Your church is the top church in your city. Are you there? Your church is very well constructed. Your church has gates. So if they say, why are you going to that church? They say, ah, my church is fine. You know, we have big gen. You know, you, if, if, that's your motiv- if, if that's your motivation, you are one of those who is moved by sight. Who, you are one of those who are moved by sight, who, who are moved by, by colors. Your spirit will not be built like that. What will build your spirit is the word of God. 
is beyond colors. Hmm? Faith does not move by sight. Faith moves by the Spirit. Verse 4. When he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even an hundred and fourscore days. In those days, now, okay, let me do a little theology. Very little, very small theology. Let's do small theology. Now, and in this theology, we are going to be looking at three languages. Three. The first one is um, Hebrew. The second one is Greek. And the second one is English. Are you there? You see, Hebrew is older than Greek. That was why the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. So if you want to understand the Old Testament, if you find anything there and you want to do theology, go and check the meaning of that word in Hebrew. Because that Old Testament part of your Bible was written in Hebrew language. Because when they were writing the Old Testament, Greek had not existed. Greek has not even come into existence. Are you there? But by the time they were writing the New Testament, Greek was evolving. So many of the people who were used to Hebrews were now coming into Greeks. So the New Testament Bible was written in Greek. So if you want to understand the New Testament, you may need to check the meaning of some of those words in Greek. Are you there? <laughs> this thing you are learning for free now. I labored. <laughs> If you see the way I labor, this thing I'm just teaching you in two minutes now. I lab for for years. I did not even know. I labored. If you, <laughs> I labored through obedience. The Lord will say, "Listen to this one. Go to before I could come into it." So as I was saying, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, and the New Testament was written in Greek, because the Hebrew was older than Greek. So by the time they were writing New, New Testament, uh, the Greek language was already, you know, was new. So it was, it was the reigning language at that time. So they wrote New Testament in Greek and the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. Are you with me? You see, not too many people have money. I'm going to explain why. Even in this our country, there are only few people that have money. Most of the people we call wealthy men, rich men, do not really have money. It is money that have them. There is a there's a different thing for there's a it's a different thing to have money, and is another thing when money now have you. You can possess money, and money can also possess you. That's why the Bible says, "The love of money." is the root of all evil now what sign will i see in the life of a rich man what sign will i see in the life of a wealthy man to show that money has possessed this person to show that this person is no longer in possession of money unfortunately now i don't mean to to hurt anybody but just pay attention to me Unfortunately, some of you listening to me now, you have somebody close to you that though the world will see them as rich people, wealthy people, but from this teaching now, you are now beginning to see that, oh, this man does not really have money. It is money that has taken possession of him. The moment you no, you no longer have time for God because of the wealth that you you know, in quote, you now have is a sign that you have become a slave to that thing. Because according to spiritual rule, anything that you cannot control will control you. Anything that you have not possessed has actually possessed you. So the money you have that now have you has possessed you. Let me give you an example. So, because the money has possessed you, 
You will not come to fellowship because you want to chase money. So if there is anything around your that time that you have separated for God that can give you money, you will go for that thing and beg God to wait for you. So you go and get the money, come back and then you, you will not mind robbing God to rob your belly. Oh my God. I hope you understand this. There are many people that are robbing God because they want to rob their belly. Hmm? The first rob is R-O-B, which is synonymous to stealing. The second one is R-U-B, which is synonymous to pleasure. So when I say there are people that do not mind robbing God because they want to rob their belly, what I'm trying to say is there are people that do not mind stealing Eh? There are people that do not mind disobeying God because of pleasure. So if you... Oh my, okay. <laughs> the Lord will help us. I hope you have been blessed now. And look at this. Anytime... Have you asked yourself, why is it that the devil is making these people advertise their bondage? Because the one that is telling you, I just bought a new house. 500 million. I just did this. 2 billion. The one that is showing you how that he just bought a new ship, all those things you see on social media. Do you know what the devil is trying to do? He's trying to, he's trying to use that to pollute the heart of the innocent ones. Because there are people that will look at that and then begin to do what they should not do. So as they begin to move in the wrong direction, the devil will be happy because he has been able to achieve his plans. So we don't need to Join the devil ignorantly to achieve his mandate. If you must achieve anything, let it be kingdom mandates. Are you with me? I think I need to quickly go back to that teaching. Though I have, I have less than 10 minutes. I think I need to go back to the, the scripture. I think I've, that's all I saw. I think I've shared the revelation I saw now. So let, let's go back to that teaching. Now, let me surprise you. I've not gone back to this teaching. I'm still sharing what I saw. I, you know, as I was teaching now, I just saw a revelation in the spirit. So I want to quickly share that thing I saw. So from what I was seeing, now, from what I saw now, the Lord is now trying, the Lord is now pointing my attention to the people we call wealthy men, rich men in Nigeria. And then the Lord now began to mark them down. The Lord said, this one does not have money. It is money that I have him. This one does not have money. This one, no, it is money that is... Are you there? <laughs> Let me give you an example. You see, when you see people that have money, those that have money are the people that are in control of money. The one that have money will use money. The one that money has... The one that money has taken hold of will not use money because money is his master. He will use people. Oh my God, this thing I'm teaching you now. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh my God, Father, please help my people to understand. Help them to understand. Because it's a waste of time when, you know, sometimes it's a burden in my heart. When I begin to share some things that I see, some revelations, I, it's a burden. And the burden is, I hope my people understand. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> the one that have money is the one that is in control of money. Eh? That one will use money because money to that person is a tool. And that's the right format. Are you there? But the one that money has taken hold of hmm, will not use money. Not even will not, cannot use money because Money is now his master. And because he cannot use money, he will now begin to use people. So those that have money, use money. Those that money have taken hold of, use people. That's what you must understand. I will explain to you. This that I'm saying now is a bitter truth. But God wants you to hear it. Are you there? That's it. It's a bitter truth, but God wants you to hear it. I can assure you, if you go online now, you will see some of these things I'm talking about. They will show you the new um, 
the, the, the new private jet they just bought and they will put the price there. Those things are not necessary. When you see a rich man who is living an extravagant life, who is always doing show off, they want to tell you how that uh, they, they give 500 million to, to 20 people. When you see people like that, you have already seen a slave to money. See, I tell you truth in the Holy Ghost. There are people that really have money in this country, but you will never know because they are in charge. Most of these rich people that are everywhere now, you are, you are the one celebrating them. You don't know that that thing they are advertising is actually bandage. And some of you now, even the young ones, you are already following this demonic pattern. So you bought, you just, you just bought shoe of 20,000 naira. You, you snap it, you put it on your status. God has, they will not add God to it to make it look spiritual. God has done it again. 20,000 naira. That thing you are doing, you are advertising your bandage. Yes. The one that truly have money will not do show off. They, they, don't, they don't need to tell you how much they bought their clothes. They don't need to tell you how much they don't need to tell you how much they bought their car. Why? Because they are in charge. One thing we don't understand is this. When you are in bondage, the devil makes you feel like you are in charge. And when you are in charge, the devil tries to make you feel like you are in bondage so that you can come into the real bondage. Are you there? For instance now, you are a sister and you are keeping yourself, I don't want to defy myself. The devil will now arrange people around you that will make you feel like you are stupid. So they will come to you and say, ah, why are you, this girl is so unserious, not even wise. In this civilized world, you are keeping yourself. If you are truly matured, you do what you are doing. It's a lie. You are the one that is in true freedom. So when you are in freedom, the devil makes you feel like you are in bondage. And when you are in bondage, the devil makes you feel like you are what? In freedom. Are you there? So most of these things you see online, these unnecessary advertisements, somebody bought a car, one billion, they are showing it. They bought a wristwatch, one million dollars, they are showing you. That thing you are seeing, is not something to celebrate because it is an advertisement of bandage. Somebody is telling you, I'm in bandage. So our prayer is not just that we have money. It's not just that money comes in. Mm -mm. The prayer is that, Lord, I will have it, not that thing having me. Now let's continue from verse 7. And they gave, him, and they gave them drink in vessels of gold. Can you see that? Even the cup that they used to drink in that party was pure gold. <laughs> pure gold. Just imagine you are holding a cup with, you know, a cup made of pure gold. You may not even be able to drink water because the, 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 the beauty of that cup alone will get you carried away. That's to show you how wealthy this king was. The vessels being diverse, one from another, and the royal wine in abundance. Can you see that? You see, the wine that they were serving in this party, you see, when the, when the Bible begins to take time to explain something, you need to pay attention to that. Why is it that the Bible is taking time to explain everything they used in this party? There's something God wants us to learn. So the Bible now told us that royal wine was in abundance it will mean that in those days <laughs> wines are not the same there are certain wines in those days that were referred to as royal wines there are certain wines that you cannot find in anybody's house except that person is is from you know is from the palace there are certain wine that not just anybody can drink except the king so these were the kind of wines that were served in this party. The Bible said royal wines were abundant. And this royal wine will be, of course, more expensive than just ordinary wine. And the Bible said that royal wine was in abundance. Meaning, though it was expensive, but they had that wine surplus. Are you there? <laughs> when you see a rich man, when you see a man that is wealthy, 
a man that is wealthy can buy a car for 200 million and then use 100 million to celebrate that car. Are you there? There's nothing a wealthy man cannot do. One thing you must note about wealth is, you see, money can fly away. Money has feathers. It can fly. If you allow money to rule you, you will end up losing it. Are you there? There are few people that have money. But you see now, you see now. Something is opening up in your spirit now. Now, I'm seeing a revelation in the spirit. Okay, let me share this thing I'm seeing in the spirit. Let me share with you. When I'm done, then I will go back to this teaching. Have you not seen people that they try to manipulate others because of money? Look at this. They can have you not seen even some of these things I'm sharing with you is common even among some of our uncles, our brothers. You hear things like, Well, if you don't do what I have to do, I will not. I will not pay your school fees. That may look like a normal statement, but that, that is a manipulation. Are you there? The one that is subjected to money cannot use money because money is his master. So he will begin to use people instead of using money. Huh? Okay, he can... Have you not seen people that... They can just... Hello, hello pastor? Please come and meet me now. No regard for the anointing, no regard for his calling, no regard for anything. And the reason they, are, they think they can talk anyhow is because they were the ones that bought the land where the church built the auditorium on. For the fact that you built a church and you gave it to a man of God does not mean that man of God has now become your slave. Whatever you give to a man of God, you have given to God. Are you there? It doesn't make you his master. The, the one that called him is his master. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, you, you will now see that one of the things that is common in this generation is, you know, most of, okay, let me just go straight to the point. Most of the celebrities, the people we call celebrities, do not have money. It is money that have them. When you truly have money, you cannot, you don't need to come and snap how that you were eating chicken and macaroni. You don't need to put that online. That's foolishness. It's not necessary. Okay, I bought a car. Maybe I bought a car, 500 million. And I put it online. Thank God, though. New car arrived, 500 million. No. Those things you are doing is a sign that you are a slave to that money. You don't have it. The reason you want to show the world everything you are buying is because you are not in charge. It is that money that is in charge. So those things you are doing, you think you are becoming famous, you don't know that it is that money that is ruling you. 